Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Live at Five from our virtual pub, McGregor's, um, where we've always believed that we are more than a bar, and that's why we're carrying on with this. Um, this is the idea to, to bring musicians, singers, bakers, um, drinkers, whatever you are, dancers in, included actually, into this, into our daily little uh, gathering, as if we were in the pub itself. Uh, delighted to see that uh, we have Anna Massey with us, our Black Isle correspondent. How are you doing today, Anna? Oh, a bit chilly, a bit dreech, but keeping fine. It certainly is very dreech out there altogether. That's certainly going to keep people indoors if, if nothing yeah. else will. Um, you can, of course, get in touch with us. You can email at scotlandsbigsession at gmail.com. We'll tell you more about the Scotland's Big Session. We've actually got some brilliant music in today's programme with Myred Green and uh, Angus Lyon and also a brilliant song from Hannah Rarity in the show today as well. So it is a virtual bar so come along say hello to us on the uh, Facebook comments thing. Uh, we've been getting comments from all over the world and it really is brilliant um, and uh, helps fill up an hour actually if you keep getting in touch with us. That's the idea isn't it Anna? That's the, that's the very plan, yes. <laughs> now you've had two dogs starring in a lot of your Black Isle correspondent uh, yep. over the, the last wee while but I don't think I don't think I've ever seen a dog quite as intelligent as this one this is incredible That is absolutely incredible. I was meant to warn you uh, before that, you know, don't think the screen has frozen. That is the dog just being perfectly still. Uh, I've never seen the like. How do you train a dog to do that, Anna? I, I don't know. I mean, Bruce, you saw the other day that I haven't managed to command lie down out of mine. So Jenga seems way beyond my capabilities anyway. That's incredible. It is, absolutely. Well, you get those kind of dogs, but you also get desperate dogs. Yep. And then you just get completely and utterly crazy dogs. What you doing? Want to go down? Can you go downstairs? I love that. I actually watch that clip most days just to hear me Because I think that's the one thing we've noticed in social media at the moment. You know, it used to be everyone just posted up all oh, the lovely things in life. Now people are just, here's a picture of me cutting my toenails. Here's my <laughs> mental dog going absolutely crazy head first down the stairs. Nobody's <laughs> pretending anymore. It's just, well, this is normal, normal life. The but you're still run off. <laughs> I know, I know. But then you still get... The disapproving kind of dog as well. He's looking at it all just with a shake of the head. He sound like a bloke. Blue. Fucking. 
which I still, again, is one of my favourite ones out there. Now, we've got loads of people getting in touch, as usual, Anna. Uh, Jan Stroud is saying it's lovely in Girvan today. So, yeah, there seems to be a theme, Bruce. Everybody that's got in touch to say hello so far is telling us how much better the weather is wherever they are. <laughs> We've mentioned that it's a brief day here in the Highlands. But, oh, uh, yeah, no, there's loads of people saying it, lovely dogs and very patient dogs there. They are just incredible animals. If you've got any special animals you want to uh, share with us, any talents they have, send them in at scotlandsbigsession at gmail.com. We're always delighted to see it. All this brought upon us because of Anna's ability to train her two fantastic dogs, or maybe Bob's ability to train the two dogs. I think that was more, <laughs> more likely, really, wasn't it? <laughs> well, we're always, we're always asking you for your photographs and the view from your window. Um, we've got a, a few beauties here today. This is from Eleanor Cormack in Murphley in Perthshire. She's also got some great cakes coming up. But Hi, Bruce Anna and Mrs McGee. I've been listening, taken to listening to the programme whilst having my government-mandated daily walk. Yesterday I was listening to the Black Isle correspondent while sauntering along the Tay, so thought you might appreciate that view since the one from my actual window is quite mundane. Well, thank you very much, Eleanor. It is a beautiful uh, view altogether, the Tay. And then uh, up to uh, Jan and Siga in Loch Carran. Uh, photo of food eventually growing in my Loch Carran greenhouse. Chilies, peppers, broad beans, shallots, leeks and onions. That looks absolutely fantastic. You looks great. Making... I think they sent some beautiful photos of tulips last week, didn't they? They did. They, they did indeed. Very green-fingered Jan and Siga. Oh, it's, it's great. I think we might all have to turn to being green-fingered, actually. We have got a polytunnel in a... In a Box, I think. It's in a box, isn't it, Mrs McGregor? And uh, one day we're going to get out and set it up, because I think we've always wanted to do it anyway, so this is the perfect time to actually... Yeah, you've got no excuses now, Bruce. Well, apart from the fact it's minus three, I think that's uh, why. Did you finish <laughs> taking down that wall last night? Oh, the Great Wall of China is down. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Honestly, I went out for a run this morning and I had my heart monitor on, and I kept it on whilst I was thumping the six bricks that were... Honest God, the guy who put them in must have used half a ton of cement to put them together. <laughs> I was, uh, my heart rate monitor was in the red for most of it. It was completely, <laughs> and there, I was just getting laughed at indoors. Well, <laughs> Mrs. McGregor was sipping at the coffee, laughing oh, at no. me. Yeah, but no, it's all gone now, and the bins fit into that space perfectly. Great. Yeah, there we go. Now you know, or your dad certainly knows, Anne from Dingwall here. Yes. Uh, she is. Uh, this is a, she sent in this and said, Hi Bruce, Anna and Mrs McGregor, here's a video of a wee pal of mine. Come rain or shine or coronavirus, this robin comes to eat from my hand each morning when I'm going around the garden feeding the birds. We love the show and always make a point of stopping whatever we're doing in time to watch it. In normal circumstances, we both go to Bob's mandolin class. My husband John has been snuck into the class even though he plays the four-string banjo. Controversial. He has sent us the music for the Road to Sky this week, which I'm really enjoying practising. You're doing a wonderful job. And keep us smiling. So let's have a wee look at this. Anne's also asked for a couple of tunes, uh, Bill Navarre and The Train Journey North, which I think, uh, well, hopefully we were muted there because I was trying to sing it to Anna across the, the airwaves. And uh, did that make any sense, Anna? It did, yes, yep. We might have a crack Remember the tomorrow, though. Yes, it's, it's a, a great, great tune. tune. Yeah, Tom, that one of Tom years. Anderson's, I think. No, no, there's a brilliant version of it done by The Easy Club. Uh, they play it normal once through and then they suddenly put it into minor for a couple yes, of Yes, that's minutes. what came into my head um, yeah. when I was thinking about it. There was a, a minor version, so it was an Easy Club. Yeah, yeah, they did a, They just didn't do enough music, the Easy Club. Brilliant band altogether. Anyway, the Black Isle correspondent, what has she been up to today? Let's find out. <laughs> it's a little bit monkey. The weather outside But never mind, we've got a freshly laundered patio parasol under which we can hide 
You kind of pick it up when it's raining like this, that would be silly. And it's not even varnished yet. Fun sponge. Debbie Downer crack vacuum. <laughs> Maybe can you light a fire, but... <laughs> Come on, baby, light my fire. That's what I'm going to do. See ya. Hopes and dreams. With the daily updates, you can't make up. It's the Black Isle Correspondent. She lives in Fort Rose and tells us what goes on. If your isolation causes desperation, try the Black Isle Correspondent. If you're feeling grumpy, you'll find some company. One of the difficulties with having a stove rather than an open fire is the specific aperture at the front dictates the size of your logs. Back at the homeschooling. One foot twelve inches. Should have done that metric. Thirty centimetres for you in Europe. Ten inches. Twenty-six centimetres. Five inches. Thirteen centimetres. Bonsoir. Do you need to write that down? No. Some of the stuff in the log pile does not fit in the hole in the front of the stove. Prime example. So, they're needing a ducted. Ooh, now that all needs tidied. Your logs, piling up higher, piling up higher and higher. Chafty! What's happening in here today, Bob? Well... Oh, it's so tidy, look! No, I'm not finished yet. Oh, and a rave. Petroleum canisters, garden equipment hanging. That's a super bar from the other day. People will remember that. We are a two ruser family. People won't know that word, Dad. Watering can. So two rusers, a super bar. What else is there that folk might need to know? Well, a couple of chainsaws. That's, that's a big beast. That's just chainsaw, though. Mm. People. <laughs> that's just the same word. That's amazing what a difference. Nearly there. I heard beeping from outside. I've come inside. It sounds like the oven and it smells amazing. What's happening? I've just taken the cake out. She's baking again! It'll be fine. Oh, a cracking tan. Mm -hmm. some factor eight on it from yesterday. I could have. Mm -hmm. Oh, go today. Side of house of over and done. It's fine. That's my bit. Mm. Oh, goodness me. Plenty over here because that's quite black and you'll never know. Oh. There we go. You've only got the one pair of glasses on. That's your cooking mode, you're absolutely right. I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I'm leaving it here. I'm taking the dogs out a walk to the pier. Yeah. And then I'm going to come home and get a slice of that cake and a wee cup of tea. Lovely. You could change the song, any song, couldn't you, and make it suitable to the Black Isle correspondent. <laughs> I think that's what, that's what seems to be the theme of, of running through this. But we have, Cathy Sproul's come in and added another line. You know how you had your anonymous just... letter yesterday? Well, yes. here's another line. If you're feeling manky, don't be cranky. She's the Black Isle correspondent. Oh, that's good. Well, we've got yesterday um, this lovely card that came in with the words... I still don't know who has sent this, but it was lovely. Uh, get your daily tonic, she's quite laconic, your Black Isle correspondent. <sighs> the family composition changes disposition now. Try some crack and cake, that's all it'll take from the Black Isle correspondent. If you're feeling down, then she'll lift your frown right here. <laughs> oh, that's Which is amazing. <laughs> Well, there's loads of, loads of you getting in touch, including Douglas Coulter, who said, Anna, can you send Bob down to sort out Ur's shed? It looks bonny. Ours is a disaster. He'll be right with you in a couple of months. <laughs> um, yeah, there's... <laughs> uh, congratulations on the birth of your grandson, Mr and Mrs Chip Denton, in Massachusetts. Uh, Hope you get across the pond to see him soon. You might even make it to McGregor's. I know you'll be watching this. That's brilliant. Congratulations to you, Mr and Mrs Denton. That's um, a place to come and wet the baby's head, McGregor's. Absolutely. And Rod Garut, a uh, beautiful day in Telluride in Colorado. Oh. Or Telluride? Telluride? Telluride. 
tell you right. I we don't we don't know. It, we, we need no, that to find is it. That's is it. that is that how you say it? Oh yeah. well. Oh well. Speak thankfully, for music or something. Oh right. Well, thankfully, Muriel Cockburn just lives in Tarvey. That's good. <laughs> I'm glad, glad she's staying there. Now, my friend was chuffed to be able to do that with a red squirrel until it bit her, and she ended up in A and E. That's from Minnie <laughs> Leslie. I take it that's the feeding of the robin that she's uh, referring to there. Oh dear, dear, dear. That happened to a friend of mine in Central Park as well. She was really delighted with herself. Oh, the squirrel! And then she got bitten, and it all turned really like a really crap holiday after that. <laughs> We've got loads of brilliant, brilliant music for you. Uh, we started off a couple of weeks ago a thing called Scotland's Big Session. And the idea is to take tunes that anyone can play in a session. Um, you know, if you're in Aberdeenshire and you're over at the West Coast, well, you can bring a couple of these tunes that we're going to put together. And by the time the lockdown is all finished, we'll be able to share these tunes and go across the country. In fact, across the world and be able to play um, these amazing Scottish tunes and songs as well. We've got a lovely song coming up from Hannah Rarity very shortly. But first, we've got uh, your old mucker, Myrid, Anna. That's right, Myrid Green, originally from the beautiful village of Achiltabui. Uh, she now lives in Ullapool. She's a piper, accordionist. She plays a bit of piano. She's been working away on the guitar as well lately. Um, she's a great composer and... Also, these days, doing a lot of beautiful painting. She's been painting a lot of the, the landscapes um, around Westeros, where she's from. But this tune uh, that she has sent, she sent us a set of waltzes. And the first one is, I think, what we could call her greatest hit. <laughs> it is indeed. This is Myron Green. Hello, here is Maggie West's waltz going into Margaret's waltz. Thank you. 
Absolutely beautiful tunes there from Myred Green. I hope she's doing well up there. Hey, remember, if you've got tunes that you want to send in to us, please send them in at Scotland's Big Session at gmail.com. Uh, we're trying to, well, we hope after 12 weeks or so, we'll have a kind of ultimate collection of Scottish tunes and songs. Uh, we've got a beautiful one coming up from Angus Lyon later on in the programme. And we've got a fabulous song from Hannah Rarity. And also um, one of our regulars at uh, Blazing in Bewley every year, uh, Trevor, has sent us in, I think, a song that just has to be part of every session. Um, and uh, he's, he's got that on the, the E-flat horn, I think it is, as well, which is lovely. Murda Morris has been in touch. Is that the same lassie who was playing with Kenny Anderson on the last Adam Holmes tour? Yes, it is. Uh, Myra yeah. plays in Kenny Anderson, also known as King Creosote. Uh, she plays in his band, and they also um, do some duo stuff, and they go under the name Boy Gull, but like a, like a floating oh, boy. boy from the sea with a B-U-O-Y and Gull like a seagull. Uh, so they've got they've released a couple of couple of tracks together, but yeah, Myra was out on um, on a big tour with Kenny just after the Blazing Fiddles tour, actually, just before the lockdown. They were sort of chasing their way around the country just before all of the venues got closed. So they had a a few beautiful gigs. I think they played like the Barbican in London and really big venues. They had a, a packed out concert hall in Glasgow for the Scotland with Love oh, yeah. show. Where Kenny put music to old videos. Do you remember uh, the Ostrava gig we played in the Czech yes. Republic and the temperatures of whatever it was just boiling, absolutely yeah. boiling. You could tell the Scottish bands because I remember seeing the two of them up on stage and oh, yeah. Kenny, Kenny was kind of trying to hide this uh, in the in the shade and uh, Myra had the shorts on and well we just looked, all of us looked so peely wally white. It was oh, <laughs> you could spot a Scot at a hundred metres. Cool. <laughs> but they had that amazing thing that was like um, like the sprays that you see at Morrison's and uh, supermarkets where they spray refrigerated water on the fruit and veg to keep it fresh. They had one of those, but for people. There was uh -huh. like an inflatable little gate that you could walk through and it would spray cool water on you when you went through it. It was just lovely. It was an incredible I was festival. out there all day. Remember, it was, it was actually, the whole festival was held in a venue which used to be a... Was that a steel plant or something like, like I that? I thought it was a gas works. It was a, it was a huge industrial plant and it had all gone rusty. And it actually looked like, the, the I don't know, the setting for a Scooby-Doo episode yeah, without any like doubt at all. Mad Max festival just or something. thousands and thousands of people at a great festival. Anyway, that's got nothing to do with this. We just started warbling on because it's oh. time to look at food. <gasps> we're very keen on looking at food. Yes. You were, how did your haggis go last night? Oh, it was really good, thanks. It was lovely. It was from Monroe's Butcher across the road. Really tasty. Very good. Well, Leslie Compton has been in touch. Um, she said, Hi, my husband and I are loving the Live at Five. We look forward to every morning. It's live at 11 where we are. We visited the Sunday session at McGregor's on both of our recent trips to Scotland, so we're big fans. I love cooking and food photos, so I thought I'd contribute to the show. Dinner yes. last night was salmon, Brussels sprouts and couscous. I've got to say, that looks absolutely beautiful. Well, later... We had a snack plate and scotch. Highland Park 18 year old for myself and Lagavulin 16 for him. Now that got Mrs McGregor quite excited. She's a bit of a smoky, smoky whiskey uh, fan. And in fact, she has got a very special bottle of Laphroaig uh, winging its way to the house. Very exciting. Very exciting. That's good news. Well, it's, it's good news for her. I, I can't stick the stuff. <laughs> It's so even double good news for her then. It's really double good news for her. Now, remember uh, Eleanor, we were looking at her when she was uh, walking down the side of the Tay. Oh yes, well, this is amazing. This is lovely. Have you got this email here? I do, yes. Thanks for keeping me entertained. I live alone, so I'm seeing you guys more often than people I actually know. <laughs> You'll need to stop by for some gin and cake when this is all over. No bother, Eleanor. Today's cake offering is also attached. It took me two attempts to get the perfect Swiss roll, but it was tasty this time. Shame I need to eat it all myself. Ah, that was the beautiful Swiss roll there. That's really we were, fresh. We, we were talking about that Swiss roll. It is Swiss rolls, isn't it? Do, do people in Switzerland eat Swiss rolls? We just call them rolls. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. I'm not sure. Hey! Um, now, here's somebody we, we, I owe an apology to, um, Elise 
No, Elsie and Andy Unwin. Anyway, Elsie has sent us in. <laughs> and it's the, the sight of all the delicious scones, cakes, etc. shown on your programme drove me to a baking frenzy this morning. <laughs> the first loaf of bread I've baked since the early 80s. Wow. Two lemon drizzle cakes and a couple of rounds of shortbread. By the way, are you planning to provide a larger capacity chairs at Blazing and Bailey this year? <laughs> Many thanks again for your wonderful programme every evening, which is the highlight of our day. Uh, Elise and Andy Unwin, thank you so much. We will have to look at that, obviously, after uh, 12 weeks of lockdown. Yeah, I think people... we're probably just going to have to put benches out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's something. Uh, uh, flights and travel and everything is going to have to be re-looked at. And uh, have you got this one from David Scott? Yes, this is um, the Brownies. My daughter, Emily Rose, who used to come to Bewley, has made good work of the last of the flower to make her incredible brownies. Seen here with some nominal exercise equipment to stave off the, the onset of lockdown lardiness. <laughs> Loving the show. Brilliant. Lockdown lardiness. Yeah, I think there could be quite a bit of that afterwards. Uh, now, the next one, special one here. We were talking about getting Josh involved in, in mm. activities around the house. He did help me take the debris from the Great Wall of uh, Inverness away this morning, so <laughs> he, did. he was quite active in that. But last night, he created an apple pie that a famous baker that I can't think of would have been very proud of. Who's a famous baker? Mary Berry! Mary Berry, that's right. I've never watched Bake Off, I've got to be honest. I might now, though, now that I've started seeing some of the, the efforts that have come in here. This was fantastic. Very, very good. Really and great. Delicious. And in particular, when you compare it to this, Derek Smith sent this in. I must point out, this is not Derek's efforts, but <laughs> while some politicians are rising to the occasion, others just don't put enough baking powder in, and uh, Miles Briggs at MSB showing off his scones. And, oh, I think some of you must get in touch with Miles, because this is, this is the poor man. I, he needs a hand. I don't think your birds would be interested in this, to be quite honest. Anyway, as I say... The dogs probably would, though. The dogs would probably, yeah. But we are seeing this kind of, the the, the human side of social media. Uh, it's great right. to see, yeah, see each other's disasters as well as all these lovely bits of baking. Uh, so please send in your disasters as well <laughs> to Scotland's Big Session <laughs> at gmail.com. And we will certainly share uh, some of ours when they, they pop along, as they most definitely will. Um, we're going to look at a couple of songs just now, um, starting with uh, the lovely Hannah Rarity, who, w well, hopefully, hopefully we're going out on tour with in August. Um, you've known Hannah for quite a while, Anna, haven't you? Yeah, um, I think we maybe all went, we all met her for the first time. At the same time, we were um, on the Hogmanay show. I think six years ago, and Hannah was singing ah. online sign that night. That was the first time I met that her. Was her, right? Yeah, and um, we were sitting beside each other in makeup. There was us and Jackie Bird, who was not chatty, uh, but Hannah was saying that the night before she'd been playing some board games with friends, and we, we bonded immediately over a love of articulate. I see. Stadium. So yeah, but I've been. I've done some gigs with Hannah. We did a little tour at Christmas time last year, and we're hoping to do some more gigs this December, um, a little Christmas tour, and she's just an absolute hoot, excellent company, but also one of the most beautiful voices I think I've ever heard. That's all very well, but to be quite honest, I'm more interested in the Jackie Bird in the makeup room and the no oh. chat. What happened there? <laughs> That's far more interesting. I gave her some of my most golden chat, like I really, because I was like, <laughs> that is Jackie Bird got to bring out the big guns here and maybe I just maybe I overreached Bruce maybe I tried too hard but mm -hmm. I thought I was on sparkling form not even a slight titter did I raise from Jeff <laughs> she looked in fact actively displeased with my company who is this oink yeah <laughs> seems like I wish we were at the BBC because we were at the fruit market so we were all just in the one dressing room oh that is makeup and hair, and I think she was just longing for her private suite at the BBC so oh, funnily enough the boys didn't really have that problem I, I was on the phone to Phil Cunningham last night he was in great form it was good to chat to him and oh, good. I don't think any of the boys got any makeup done whatsoever uh, not that I can remember anyway anyway enough rabbiting on let's hear Hannah Rarity Hello 
Hello everybody oh. at Live at Five. I hope you're all doing well and taking care in this pretty mental time. Um, I was delighted when Bruce gave me a wee message to ask if I would sing a song. Um, I've been up at Blazing and Bewley with the Blazers uh, teaching for the past couple of years and uh, sharing some songs with, with people up there, which has been a great treat. So I thought I would sing something tonight that uh, some of you might already know. Uh, a good one for, for joining in at home and having a wee sing song, wherever you are. We're going to uh, do Green Grows the Laurel. Um, so you might have heard this from the singing of Chris Drever or other fab singers. Here we go. I once had a sweet head, but now I need his kin and he's left me to weep and to moan. He's kin and he's left me, but contented I'll be, for I'll find another far better than he. Green grows the laurel and soft falls the dew. Sorry was I, love, when parted with you. But by your next meeting, I hope you'll prove true. And we'll change the green laurel to the violet say blue. He wrote me a letter for sweet rosy lines. He wrote me another, all twisted and twined. Keep your love letters, and I will keep mine. And write to your sweetheart, and I'll write to mine. Green grows the laurel, and soft falls the dew. Sorry was I, love, when parted with you. But by your next meeting, I hope you'll prove true. And we'll change the green laurel to the violet say blue. He passes my window both early and late. And the looks that he gives me, they make my heart break. And the looks that he gives me a thousand times o'er You are the sweetheart I once did adore Green grows the laurel and soft falls the dew Sorry was I, love, when parted with you But by your next meeting I hope you'll prove true and we'll change the green laurel to the violet say blue. I oft times do wonder why young maids love men. I oft times do wonder why young men love them. But by my experience, I now ought to know young men are deceivers wherever they go. Green grows the laurel and soft falls the dew. Sorry was I, love, when parted with you. But by your next meeting, I hope you'll prove true. And we'll change the green laurel to the violet say blue. Season, bye. What a singer and what a great song as well. I absolutely love that. I really do hope we can get out this year and tour with Hannah. It just yeah. be a joy to, to do some strings with uh, that. And so many people are enjoying that. Um, just, yes. Uh, it's gone mad. With people yeah. saying, could listen to you all night long. Uh, I could, even somebody's remarked on the acoustics in the room, which is something we've not really been that bothered about up to this point. Pierce oh. Scott, Faultless. Hannah, thank you from Mesquite in Texas. And... Uh, Kenny Dexter, very much enjoyed Hannah's song, thank you. Um, Fritz is just saying, loved your voice. Gail Hillsworth, a fabulous, could listen to her voice all day long, says Kimberly Hensley. And Alison Massey's enjoying that as well. She's just 
and absolutely fantastic singer. She's actually recently released a couple of new tracks. If you search for Hannah's music on the Bandcamp website, she has got a lovely version of the song The Snows They Melt The Soonest, which she's just released. So uh, visit her website and find her music. It's just it's just beautiful stuff. It'll, uh, it'll make your days better. Yeah. And she's been an absolutely brilliant part of the Blazing and Bewley team. I think two years in a row now she's come up and taught the singing workshops for us and performed during concerts. And the plan is that Hannah is coming back this year in October to host the singing workshops at Blazing and Bewley. And um, yeah, hopefully, as you're saying, Bruce, hopefully we'll, we'll be out on tour with her in August as well, getting a, a shot of playing some of these brilliant songs. Yeah. But um, I think there was just, we've had a few singing tutors at Bewley. Oh, sorry, what were you saying? We've just got a wee clip uh, that we're going to uh, play here from Bewley. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about this one. So this is a song, this is a little line from a, a Rick Taylor song. Rick was a wonderful trombonist, um, musical director, sort of Yoda character, who had moved from the London session scene up to um, the island of Skye a few years ago, got really heavily involved in the folk music scene in Scotland, and he was an absolutely massive, integral part of a lot of events for a lot of people. Uh, he sadly died just uh, just about a year ago. Um, so this year was the first year that we had Blazing and Bewley without Rick leading our group work workshops, and um, this little this little line is from one of Rick's songs, and I think between Hannah being a really popular song teacher and Rick writing an absolutely unforgettable riff, this little line became kind of the soundtrack of the week. So um, we mentioned the other day that there had been a Bewley fun run, um, or we mentioned that in the podcast maybe, but the, at the end of the week, the Friday afternoon, there was a big run that Angus and Jimmy organised and uh, people were like running along singing this line that happened at the end of uh, the end of concerts people were walking up the street singing this wee bit and at the end of the week on the Friday afternoon everybody was gathered in the Phipps Hall in Bewley and while we got the group photo taken at the end of the week this came out again <laughs> amazing to hear 250 odd people um, singing away like that in a, in a hall yeah. like the Phipps, it's great. Well one of the guys who has been coming to Bewley for a number of years now is Trevor Wilkinson. Uh, he plays, he came, I remember seeing the email that said, would you mind if I possibly took my E flat horn along to Blazing and Bewley, which is primarily a fiddle, fiddle school with guitar and piano and we thought, <laughs> Oh well, uh, let's see how, how it goes. But yeah. he has been absolutely brilliant, hasn't he? He's been, and uh, he's just been a, a lovely part of the week. He, um, I first met Trevor, I think about maybe seven or eight years ago, when he had first started getting into folk music. He came along to the Durham Folkworks Summer School, and this was his first sort of outing, I think, into the world of tunes. And he was quite nervous about it. He was really passionate about it, but. Over the last few years, we've just seen him absolutely uh, blossom, and he keeps he keeps turning up with the the E flat horn at the adult fair. She comes along to Blazing and Bewley. He'll be at loads of different um, music weekends, and he just gets the horn out, has a go in the sessions, and he's just really into it. And he's a lovely guy and a lovely player. He is. Well, he sent us this little clip of uh, a song that is definitely going to be in Scotland's big session.
So that's our commercial break, I suppose. Well, almost all of our commercial break. It is, of course, this time that we normally have a look at some of the, the beers and spirits that uh, either we've been sent uh, by producers or that I found in the pub that are going out of date. Um, and today's, we have a, a really nice one. We have a really nice one. Actually, first of all, before we get to the beer, this was sent in by Kyla Simpson. This is brilliant. Hi, Bruce, Anna and Joe. I've actually recently discovered Pinterest. I may finally have found an art project I could actually do. Hey! I, have you, wait till you see it though. Thanks, Live at Five, for helping us pass the time. Sincerely, Kyla Simpson, hashtag lunchtime in Burlington. <laughs> That's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Well, today's beer is from the Fallen Brewery. I think it's by a guy called Paul Fallen. And uh, he is uh, brewing in the old disused or ex-used uh, railway station in Kippen. And uh, this has been a really popular beer. He's also got a dog chew uh, kind of malt stout as well, which is really popular in the bar. But I've taken this one in particular. It's a New World Pale Ale. And uh, it, it says it's actually perfect with Indian curry, spicy pizzas or chorizo. Now, the reason that this is very handy tonight is I've got leftovers. Two nights leftovers, actually. We've got pork and duck. So it's going to be made into some form of curry tonight with leftovers. And thankfully, I've got a couple of these. I've even got the branded glass tonight, but oh. I was hoping to be able to show you the proper branding, but I had a wee bit of an accident. I got a bit excited and poured most of the beer into the glass and it suddenly frothed over and I had to run out and get a, a cloth. And I'm just saying to you, I bet that doesn't happen on News Drive or, <laughs> or John Craven's News or <laughs> think of another. You have a proper Blue Peter moment there, though. That's a real that's a <laughs> sort of Blue Peter thing, isn't what it? Like his... an elephant pooping or something. What was his name the beer going everywhere. Yeah, what was his name again in uh, John Craig, uh, in Blue Peter? The man who had... John Noakes, that was the boy. He had all the accidents. They always happened uh -huh. to him. But, yeah. So that's that's a great beer. I thoroughly recommend all their stuff. A fallen brewery, and that's great vine. Great for curries. Now, remember we were talking about Swiss roll? Yep. And where, where did it come from? Well, Frank Willemson has said, The origins of the term are unclear. In spite of the name Swiss roll, the cake is believed to have originated elsewhere in Central Europe, likely Austria. It appears to have been invented in the 19th century along with Battenberg, Donuts and Victoria Sponge. Oh. So there you go. The 19th century was when all those cakes, maybe 2020 will be the, the year of brand new cakes since everybody is stuck at home with maybe. very little amount of flour. So <laughs> that might, might be the way to get it going. Um, yeah, so there you, know, you go. You've learned something new on this, this programme today. They can never stop learning, Bruce. No, no, absolutely not. See if you want to learn something new. Uh, if you want to be really entertained tonight, there's two choices. Well, there's probably more than two. There's a <laughs> lockdown gig from uh, Davy Holt, which is a great show. We were watching it last night. Uh, but also, Hamish MacDonald, our great friend, writer, songwriter, poet, just general genius, has got this wee show. He sent us in a wee trail for what's happening tonight. <laughs> I want to sing glory, hallelujah, let the light and the love of the Lord shine through you, fill your heart with joy, but I'm not so sure, no, 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 I'm sitting in my room with my existential balloon. Well, join me, Hamish McDonald, tonight at 7 for some existential blues, peace and love, anti-politics, a spot of fishing, a look at democracy, numpty trumpty and more. That's Hamish McDonald, Facebook Live, 7pm tonight. Cos I'm sitting in my room with my existential blues. See you there. He's an absolute genius, uh, Hamish. His songs are incredible. His poetry is fantastic. And uh, watched the show last week, a couple of hours afterwards, it has to be said. Uh, really enjoyed it. He's a brilliant performer. I have no idea how he manages to memorise all the pieces that he does. He's quite, quite incredible. He's fantastic. Um, so now, Phil Bruce, that's fairly close to home. Now for mm. some great music from a little bit 
further afield. Um, Kathy Spruill and Grayson Ross have sent in a video. And yesterday afternoon, Grayson had emailed, he's a Canadian fiddler and veterinarian who wondered if we fancied a few tunes from the prairies. We said, uh, yes, please. So he has then filmed himself playing a tune, sent it to one of our most loyal viewers, Kathy Spruill, who's in Saskatchewan, and they have created a beautiful piece of music together across the internet. They have. Let's hear it just now. Hi Bruce and Anna, this is Grayson Ross from Brandon, Manitoba, Canada, and beside me is Kathy Spruill from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. We've both really been enjoying your Live at Five videos, especially the awesome music you guys have been featuring over the last few days. So we're going to try something a bit different here. Uh, we're going to use this app we've just discovered called Acapella. Um, so Kathy's going to be playing the piano, I'm going to be playing the fiddle. We're going to give you guys a couple tunes from our side of the water over here on the prairies. Uh, the first one being Whiskey Before Breakfast, and the second is one I'm sure you guys have heard before. It's called Big John McNeil. So anyways, here's Whiskey Before Breakfast and Big John. Absolutely fantastic from Kathy Spruill and Grayson Ross. Thank you so much for sending that in. Remember, if you want to send in tunes, music, um, video clips of what's going on in the house, just send them to Scotland's at big session at gmail.com. Um, we're just we're trying to fill in the hours of these days as we go ahead, and uh, it's brilliant to be able to share things right across the world. That's uh, over there in the prairies in Canada, and that just came in this morning. So thank you very much for that, Grayson and Kathy, and they promised more as well. Um, also, we've got so much good music coming up this week. Uh, Laura Beth McCrimmon has sent us some brilliant American tunes on the, the mandolin. Donald Shaw has eventually sent us in Callum's Road. Uh, with the sound of Slate as well. Jenna Reed has got two sets of, of tunes for us as well. Um, Gregor Boran sent in music. Uh, Rachel Campbell sent in tunes. Uh, oh man, there's a huge list and uh, it, it's absolutely fantastic. But you don't have to be professional or semi-professional if you're just sitting at home and you've been practicing on your whistle all day like Mrs. McGregor. That's exactly the kind of thing that we are looking for for yes. tune. <laughs> Hey, we've got the harvest home down to tea at the moment. I'm just really impressed with that. That's really difficult. 
I well, think I think she might have played before, but never told me. Um, and I think you because know, I did say, well, we could do we could do the nameless clan. She went, that's a bit easy. So I went, all right then. Oh, <laughs> that I tell you what, Bruce, it's a real learning curve, isn't it? You're learning a lot about each other with this lockdown situation. We are indeed, but I'm a, you know, the tenant, the kind of tenant's laggard and being a tenant's lovely is yeah. still the thing that sticks in my mind. Yeah, uh, that's <laughs> that's the real sort of peak of what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's good, all good stuff. Well, we're going to go out tonight with uh, another accordion tonight. This has been an accordion friendly zone this evening and uh, we had Myra Green on earlier. If you've just tuned in just now, you can go back and pick up on her great tune. We are, of course, taking all the tunes from Scotland's <laughs> Big Session and we're putting them onto the Blazing Fiddle site so you can pick up on them then. The idea is that we're going to grade them into kind of easier ones, moderate ones and more difficult ones. And then we're hopefully going to get them all out in a publication so you can get hold of those tunes and then hopefully do online videos as well. That's the plan. Um, and we've got absolutely nothing else to do. So I am pretty sure we will do it. But uh, we got this tune from Angus. Good news from Angus as well, uh, Anna. What's that? Well, he's finished lambing. Oh, yes. I, I think a couple of days ago, they've finally finished. They've had their last lamb. And now he is going to join the rest of us in the lockdown empty days. What's he going to do without the livestock to look after? I don't know. I think he'll be yomping up hills out knowing Angus. I'm pretty, probably. Pretty sure. Well, he has got two lovely daughters who look like they probably will take up a lot of time. <laughs> They're great fun. That's true. Brilliant crack. So we are going to listen to Angus. This is a brilliant tune. He suggested for Scotland's big session. It's called Maguire and Patterson's, and he gave us the name of the composer, but not somebody I'd, I'd heard of, so I'm not sure if it's an Irish tune or if it's continental. I'm not really too sure. Do you know much about it? No, I don't know anything about it. I've only heard him playing it, so we're really looking forward to it. So what's the plan tonight, Anna? Uh, I'm actually on the pan tonight. I'm halfway through. Or You're on the, the pan the tonight? Yeah, cooking. All right. Cooking. <laughs> um, the chicken is breaded and ready to go, and the tomato sauce is in the slow cooker since this afternoon, and we are having bolo milanese. Oh, very nice. Very nice indeed. Well, I'm going to make that, uh, that oh, yeah. curry, mixed up curry, and uh, see how that all goes. Uh, but taking us out tonight until uh, tomorrow, here is Angus Lyon with Maguire and Patterson's. Cheers, <laughs> Thank you.